enterprise aimed at increasing business connections here and elsewhere. At Liberty Wharf, businesses have been showing off their wares at the B2B event. BBC Radio Jersey decided she could work on her networking skills and has sent Ashley Tracy to seek help. <laughs> I think I need it sometimes when it comes to networking. Um, I never know how to follow up. Um, yeah, I'm down at Liberty Wharf, um, just walked inside and there is, uh, in, in amongst all of the beautiful granite, lots of pop-up stands with, uh, with businesses selling their wares here in Jersey. And um, there's also a lovely presentation area with sort of blue lighting, purple lighting, really setting the mood. It was full to the brim, I'm told. I'm joined by Julie Settle, the event director. How has the B2B event gone this year in its second year? It's been really good, thanks, Ashley. Yeah, um, we've had two really good days, different exhibitors um, on both days. Lots of people have got lots of really solid leads for new business. Lots of people have been meeting current clients, talking about different products, um, networking. We've had our networking expert over from the UK, Andy. And, you know, I think people have just really got into the networking opportunities here that people really don't do a lot of in Jersey. You mentioned the word lead there. What does that mean? What's a lead? Well, Grant's here um, from Active Chiropractic. Obviously, you know, he's promoting these stand-up desks. And a solid lead is all about somebody coming up and being really seriously interested in buying that product and then and all the benefits that go with it. But, you know, we've got people there that are offering services as well. And it's, you know, I run an event company. I've had some really good solid leads for people that want to do events next year. And it's just building that contact all the time. Um, and, you know, saying to them, great, you know, I'll get in contact with you next week or the following week. And just building on that, really, and converting that into, into, into some proper business for us. We're quite a small island. Do you think that we'd be better at staying in touch with each other? We are, but you know, it's not until you have an event like this that it really focuses you. I think we're all so busy in our running our businesses and being really focused that you actually forget to stand back and say, where's my business coming from next year or next month or whatever? And so it's not until you come to something like this, it gives us all an opportunity to stand back and think about our strategy a bit more. Talking about standing back, we've taken a step outside. If you're wondering why you can hear all the traffic, it's, uh, it's a little bit warm in there at the moment. Um, you had a really busy breakfast club, though, didn't you, tell me? We did. We had 80 people from the 745, 746 and 747 joint breakfast club this morning. They came on a magical mystery tour from the Pond Door over and listened to Andy gave a specific talk for the breakfast club, which was really well received. So, yeah, 80 people there this morning. It was great. You mentioned Andy. We should introduce him into the conversation. Uh, Mr. Andy Lopata. Um, he has been referred to as Mr. Networking. So tell us, how did you get such a title? I didn't choose it. <laughs> I, it was, I, I, I wrote for the Sun newspaper. They did a small business supplement a few years ago. And I got my copy of the paper when it came through. And on the front cover, there's me smiling. And it says, meet Mr. Network. And it seems to have stuck. <laughs> so tell us why they gave you that name. Is it because you're so good at following up the leads that Julie was talking about? Well, I do preach that you must follow up everyone you meet, and certainly the people that you commit to following up. So that'd be part of it. I'd, I'd like to think that a lot of it is that I practice what I preach. Um, I've been uh, running networks or speaking on networking, training on networking, writing about networking for 15 years now. Uh, and, you know, I've been very fortunate in doing it internationally as well. So I guess that when you do that, you, you start to build a name for yourself. And one of the things I teach is how to leverage your network to get your brand out there and get your name out there, build your profile. And if I can't do it, then I'm not qualified to teach it. So what were you talking about this morning at the breakfast meeting? So the morning, this morning it was about having a networking strategy. What you tend to find is that the number one reason most people go to networking events is because they're invited. Uh, no, no common sense goes into it, no thinking, that's the one I'm invited to, I'm not doing anything that morning, I'll go along. So they get the invite but don't know what they're going to do when they get there? Generally, the people don't think about it. We, we, we might put some general uh, aims around it. So, well, if I'm going there, it'll help me generate new business, for example. But we don't think through what are our actual aims, how we're going to generate that new business and which is the right network for us. So the talk this morning was about having a networking strategy. So understanding what you want to achieve, how other people can help you do it. Not necessarily events or networking sites, just the network you have around you and how that network can, can help you achieve your goals. What are the common mistakes that people make when networking? 
Well, the number one I always say is not having a strategy. Uh, and number two is probably not following up, which you've mentioned. But beyond that, if you look at networking events, uh, a common mistake is what I call the networking dance. So that is when two people catch eyes across a crowded room, they approach each other nervously, they introduce themselves, and then one asks the other, what do you do? Which is the networking equivalent of do you come here often? Mm. They, they don't care, they're not interested, they're breaking the ice. And the other one replies with a beautifully crafted, carefully rehearsed elevator pitch. And they exchange these elevator pitches, each one trying to sell to the other, and neither interested in buying. So the biggest mistake is selling to a room full of people who, aren't, who don't care. You should be building relationships, and that means talking about things you've got in common, not your job title. Andy Lopato, thank you very much. Um, Grant Henderson from Active Chiropractic, you've been here, you've had one of the pop-ups, and we were looking at your rather snazzy um, chiropractic desk. Tell us more about it. Well, the, what we're here to do today is to demonstrate the stand-up desk. It's a relatively new concept to Jersey, although it's become quite popular in many other countries around the world, particularly Scandinavia, where it's actually, in, in, I think it's in Finland, it's, it's necessary if you are setting up a new office, you have to offer your staff a desk where, which will go up and down. So the idea is that they spend 80% of their time standing and only 20% sitting down. And as a result of those kind of changes in the Scandinavian countries, they've reduced the impact of muscular and skeletal injuries on the workforce to practically zero, whereas here, 50% of the workforce will have issues with, with muscular and skeletal problems, and it costs employers a huge amount of money. So if you look at an employer the size of the state with a thousand plus employees, it's costing them millions and millions of time, uh, lost, lost work time, individuals away from work, other people having to cover their work. And for us, the advantage in being involved with this kind of event is that we have something we can actually show to people. So unless they see it and in action, it's very difficult for them necessarily to conceptualise it because it's not something that's particularly common over here. So we've got one here, we're inviting people to come down, have a little play on it. And then, as Julie and Andy were both saying, these are people often that we know already. Some of them are people that are new to us. And we're building a relationship with these people because what we're not, we're not trying to sell things. What we're trying to do is offer a service. So we're, we're there, we support them, we give them ideas, we lend them samples so they can try them in their own workplace and that way they get an idea of how it's going to work for them and their, their business or their office. And do you feel like you, you build some relationships just by being part of the, the B2B event? Oh, undoubtedly, yes. We were actually we were involved last year, which was the first year, as you know. We, we, we certainly made some good contacts there. Uh, and this year, I think we've got we've got more people coming through. The venue is beautiful, as you were saying earlier on. It's very close to the heart of the, the Jersey business district, if you like. So right on the Esplanade, uh, and so we we certainly benefited from it. Yes. So in visibility terms, and also when it comes to networking, would you recommend, or what would you say to other businesses who were maybe interested in coming next year? I'd say it's a really good opportunity, and, and do take do, do take uh, the opportunity to join in next year because I think people are a little bit wary of it. It's a relatively, for some reason, it's, a, it's quite a new idea here, which is surprising to me. I'm surprised there aren't more of these happening, but I think it's going to be a really good one. Next year is going to be huge. Is next year going to be huge, Julie? I've booked it already. <laughs> I've booked it. I've got my speaker sorted out. Sorry, Andy, one of your friends. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I've learned a lot from this time. You know, we need to get a lot more exhibitors in. And, you know, it's just about getting all that information out to people. And people come along and say, what is this about? And then once you explain it, they're like, oh, yeah, I get that now. What's the feedback been like? It's been really positive And people have been surprised which surprises me because it's a networking event. How do you not get that? But people do, and they're like, actually, you know what? I've met this person, I've met that person, I'm going to see that person next week. And, it, you know, it's been great. And it's about paying it forward, I suppose, in, in networking terms. Thank you very much, Julie Settle, Andrew Lopata and Grant Henderson. Um, live from Liberty Wharf on the outside. Uh, lots going on in Enterprise Week, all building up to the gala event at the Fort Regent tomorrow. Um, really exciting down here by the sounds of things, Sarah. And lots of new relationships made. Fantastic. OK, you need to get yourself back here, Ashley, because uh, Tony Gillan bought you an ice cream and it's in the fridge. Is it? Oh, I thought you were going to say it was melting. Well, no, no, I'm on no. my way. I'm on my way. I, no one eat it. And we shan't. I shall protect it. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed to Ashley Tracy. Yeah, the B2B event proving very successful chatting there with the organiser, Julie Settle. Thank you.